I just want to make it clear, when you're paying a premium for something, it's okay to expect it to be good. I saw a tweet yesterday about split screen campaign, how they're so disappointed that that didn't come. And I saw, a, you know, a 343 apologist in the Twitter community, which anyone watching this may be familiar with, the, there's many of them, basically said that in response to that, people are too spoiled by games nowadays and they expect stuff like that. And like, expect the quality that you paid for out of whatever you're buying. When it comes to things that are continuously evolving in nature and you're basically subscribing to a service or some kind of content, it's okay to expect and even ask for it to be better. You don't have to take things the way they are, especially when you as the customer are paying for them. You control your experience because if people stop spending money on the game it has no funding it's not going to go forward action will be taken so yeah it's okay it's okay to want things to be better and even ask for them to be better when you're paying a premium for them i don't know why i have to say that complacency unfortunately will only lead to you know worse stuff being made like you need some criticism to drive innovation to drive you to tr to want to make better stuff and make better product it's 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 a necessity criticism is unfortunately for better you know it, it might suck to hear sometimes but it's it's a necessity and just being complacent and accepting whatever's given to you with no critical thought is not helpful it's not really going to move the needle without that player feedback whether the developers listen to it well and implement changes well or not is still feedback that they do listen to we know that they listen to we know they see it because they talk about it all the time that they see it and you know if they choose not to do good on that then that's on them but they still like it's an important part of the process to see what the consumer response is and then adjust accordingly and apply that to future updates and future design decisions and everything like that like it's an important integral factor especially when your game is a live service that's the whole thing yeah. it's like this concurrent always on always evolving thing and then you're saying oh you shouldn't be like constantly checking in and being critical on it. it's like what what how does that how is that gonna work there's a new battle pass that you have to buy every season there's all these microtransactions thrown in your face you can pay 60 dollars for this campaign or the new cod was 70 dollars or whatever it is you you like you're you're paying for a service now it's not a game and they've made that very clear you're not just paying for a single product anymore you are paying into this service and you are allowed to at any point be critical of that service at any stage that if it if a new update drops to the service that isn't up to par you need to be critical of that and you deserve to be because these developers are using this whole live service thing as a crutch so that they can hide behind it as far as you know explaining why their game isn't finished yet and how oh, we'll finish it over time because it's a service and everything like that so they can hide behind that well you're allowed to be critical of when things aren't up to par as a result you know it goes both ways and it needs to be judged on merit every single time these new changes are made and not just at launch yeah it's, it's it's a really weird phenomenon being tolerant of mistakes and having a huge margin for error and just coddling the developer of, this, of the service you're paying for it's tough it's a really tough sell and i don't want and i'm and i'm not necessarily saying on a personal level any dislike necessarily for any of these people who are these are people who just seem like they ardently support this game regardless of any shortcomings purely for the sake of it not based on any merit or evidence or anything that's actually defendable maybe because they have a financial stake in it i do think that's a large factor look if you're a content creator that has made your livelihood on halo it probably wouldn't be in your best interest to talk a lot of smack about the developers and the game that you're trying to make a living off of that probably wouldn't be a good look that probably wouldn't open up opportunities for you and by the way we're very aware of this on this uh show 
And uh, we are aware that some of the things that we've said and published have probably limited or will limit our opportunities to speak to certain people. Like, like I know we're probably never going to get an interview with anyone involved with Halo. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not past or present. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not expecting an invite to COD next or uh, to yeah. join the HCS grassroots program. I don't. I don't think that's going to be right. uh, on the horizon for us because right. you know we're a little too. Uh, unmoderated in our opinions when you are this critical you run the risk of of alienating certain people alienating portions of the audience or alienating yourself from being allowed in some of these rooms where things happen for you you know what i mean just because they don't want people like that around who are you know critical of their work and that's understandable we understand that and and so i I do get why some of these people try to stay so outwardly publicly positive, even though there's seemingly nothing to be positive about. But it's just some of these posts are just crazy. Like, like the fact that, and it's evidenced in the fact that all they have to be positive about are such surface level, non, non-issue, like things that are so minuscule in importance, um, because that is really all you can grasp onto at this point that is going well for Halo Infinite or that's been implemented properly. Like, oh, look, the main menu was updated. The lobby screen was updated and it looks a lot prettier. The lighting's better. The graphics look better. It just looks way sleeker. Wow, look, that's great. The fact that that's like the one of the best takeaways from this update that you can think of is like a not good sign, right? Because it should we shouldn't even be, we should be having so much fun in game we don't care what the menu looks like, but there's so little to actually latch on to in terms of positivity or anything implemented properly that uh, we, we end up getting posts like this where people are talking like I, the, the cope. And I really don't want to say that, but like the amount of coping is it's pretty heavy at times uh, when you look in some of these threads. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Check out all of our socials and join the Game Gains Discord for updates, events, community nights, and to interact with us. And for the full discussion, check out the Game Gains podcast. Link in the description.